Welcome to the Meet Crete podcast, where we sit down and talk with people who make Crete run every day. Hi, I'm Dave. I'm one of the creative producers inside the communications department at Crete Carrier. Today, we're going to talk to the VP of Pricing and Analytics. Now, as a creative guy, I have no idea why I'm doing this interview because that isn't my wheelhouse at all. But we're going to talk to Justin Fearhouse, and he's going to tell us all about it and explain exactly what you do here. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, pretty big title, VP of Pricing and Analytics. Is it as daunting as the title sounds? I, I don't I don't think so. I mean, I think, uh, you know, over time you, you learn some things and uh, you, you try to do whatever you can to help help the company out and you you end up falling into something, I guess. So, yeah, uh, pretty, pretty happy with the with the role and being at Crete. You're a Lincoln guy? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you didn't you didn't go to UNL and, and follow the the Husker track like everybody else. Where where'd you go to no. school? Yeah, I went to went to Doan and uh in Crete, played a little soccer there and uh studied uh, accounting and finance and uh uh then ended up taking a job with uh BKD uh, out of college here here in Lincoln again. So uh I came back and uh got my uh CPA license and uh decided public accounting and auditing wasn't wasn't for me. So uh Decided to look for different options, and then found a found a job here at Crete that I oh, that I liked. Cool. So yeah. How long have you been here then? About thirteen years. It'll be thirteen years in uh, in June, minus uh, minus a stint in North Carolina for for grad school. So. Oh, grad school in North Carolina. Where'd you go? NC State. NC State. Yeah, Wolfpack. Wolfpack, man. Yeah. The Raleigh area is great, man. I've it I've is. spent some time there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's I like the way the city is inside of a circle. Right, the interstate's a giant circle around the city, which a brilliant idea. Yeah, it's a brilliant idea. Yeah, it's uh, it's great for growth. That's for sure. Yeah, so. for sure. And the tech area out there, that's that would be a great place to go to grad school. But you came back here and yep. walk me through what you do on a day. Yeah. So day to day, I spend a lot of time working on uh, projects for different departments. So uh, work on a lot of data initiatives, trying to help departments save time, be more efficient with their time, and then uh, also find ways to, to save money. Um, so creating efficiencies, giving, giving visibility to different data points uh, to help help everybody make, make better decisions. Uh, a big focus on that is uh, within the pricing and operations department. So trying to, trying to help people reduce deadhead, get more miles for trucks, and then uh, find that profitable freight. So... We'll talk more about data and analytics and, and what that means in the future, not only to this company, but the rest of the world and that kind of stuff. But outdoor guy, family guy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, married. I've uh, been with my wife for 14 years now. And uh, we actually didn't get married until July 2020. But uh, And then uh, we had, we've got one son, and uh, his name's Cade. He's two and a half. And uh He's uh he's getting wild. <laughs> so <laughs> they he's do that. yeah yeah he's he's a lot of fun. He's he's great and uh, he he has his his moments. But uh, yeah, we're we're having a blast with him. So it's good. But, you spend a lot of time outside, right? Yep yep yeah. Uh, soccer, golf, uh, a lot of pickleball. So th- that's kind of how I like spending my Damn outdoor it, man. time. But yeah. you said you played you played soccer in school a little bit. Yeah yep yep played. Uh, I uh, played soccer at uh, at Doan, so I've been you know playing since I was four or five years old, and uh, yeah, played uh, inside midfield there for them, and uh, did that all all four years. And so I I've, I've wanted to talk to somebody who who plays soccer at a higher level, and everybody yeah. I know is like high school and they're out, right? Yeah. <laughs> but why is soccer not a bigger deal here in this country? That's a uh, that's a really good question. So I think I think uh, a lot of it has to do with you know parents like my parents, the parents of all my friends. None of them played soccer. So why it didn't pick up, and why football and uh, basketball, baseball were were the primary sports when when they were growing up, I I don't know. But but I just I know that uh, you know none of them played. So I think people just kind of gravitated towards those other sports and it seems like it's slowly changing and you're kind of yeah, I hope so yeah I yeah. hope it is are you watching the Wrexham series uh yeah yeah it's great yeah which is great mm-hmm. it's it's mm-hmm. uh you know you take night or 80 minutes of a game and you compress it down to you know 
20 minutes yeah. yeah you can you can tell a story that way but mm-hmm. you know, for the most people for the most part people think soccer is pretty boring <laughs> right. I, I i would defy you to go to a doubleheader baseball game when you don't <laughs> have a rooting interest and that's that's boring yeah right. uh well hopefully you know mm-hmm. soccer will take off and and your son will be uh a superstar. He'll be the next Beckham. Yeah, yeah. Ho- hopefully, I. I He'll hope take he that likes shoe it, contract. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. What What kind of career? So you wanted to become a CPA, and what were you thinking at that time? And what kind of flipped the switch as to I'm not doing this? Yeah, you know, my dad was an accountant, and I uh, I thought it was kind of a practical. <laughs> career field to go into. And so in high school, I, I took a couple accounting courses, kind of liked it and uh, decided to just uh, uh, go for that. You know, it seemed like there was a lot of demand for, for accountants and a, a pretty good career path if you go into public accounting. So I went that way because I, I did kind of like it. And uh, when I got to Crete, um, I started getting involved in some data, data oriented projects. And I uh, as a result of that, learned how to kind of query data and, and do those things and started getting a lot of requests from coming from different departments like, hey, can you do this? Can you do that? And, and I was like, oh, it seems like this is kind of valuable. And, and, you know, you start doing some Google searches and you're like, oh, data science, like a shortage of like 1.5 million data scientists. And, you know, it's leading to, you know, a, a lot of demand in that field. And so I started looking into options and found the program at, at NC State, which was one of the first kind of analytics master's programs in, in the country. And, and uh, you know, they had a lot of uh, a lot of really good career prospects after, you know, they would bring in hundreds of companies each year and their, you know, graduation rate with people finding jobs was over a was hundred like percent by graduation for wow. when I was coming in. And so I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I'll go do that. And I was, uh, uh, applied, was really lucky to get into the program. And, uh, um, then it, it was a, a year long program and you basically took classes from nine to four every day. And then, you know, you studied at night, but you got it done in a year, which was really attractive to me. And, um, I'd kind of stayed in touch with, with Crete and, uh, they said, Hey, you know, if you want to come back, you know, we could, uh, we'd like to like to have you. And so I looked into some other options and decided, you know, I've got a lot of family and friends in Lincoln. I like Crete. I felt like I learned a lot about trucking while I was here. So I decided to come back, and uh, it's been a really, really good fit. Glad I did it. So the the CPA financial background and data do they do they go together? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I honestly I think that's. Uh, one of the the big values that I can provide is kind of like meshing, hey, here's what we see from a data perspective. How does that translate from a financial perspective? So, you know, when uh, when we go to look into things, pretty much everything we do, we're saying, hey, uh, what, you know, if, if the, you know, we can improve our, you know, drop and hook percent by this amount, how does that correlate to productivity? And then how does that correlate to improve financial performance? So we're, we're always trying to look, you know, uh, as we make these decisions and we can make better decisions, how does that uh, improve our, our financial performance? I hear the the term data a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's used in my profession, but it's, it's, you hear data all over the place now because everything is digital and has a zero yeah, or right. a one attached to it. But data at at Crete, what kind of data are we collecting? What kind of data are we using? What kind of data is a leverage to making efficiencies? Yeah, I mean, we're collecting pretty much anything and everything. And then uh, (laughs) then it's our job to try to find the best ways to, uh, to really utilize that data. So we focus a lot on drivers. You know, uh, how how do we improve driver productivity? What what freight types are the most efficient? Um, so just a good example. You know, we uh, we created a uh, driver productivity model. So we we basically identified all the factors that we think are, you know, correlated to uh, productivity. So like length of haul is a big one. So longer loads mean more productivity. Drop pickups, drop deliveries uh, versus live loading and a live unloading lead to uh, better productivity. So we really try to focus our pricing on, hey, how do we get more competitive on that freight to bring on, you know, the the better freight that's really uh, allows our drivers to be productive. And that leads to you know, happier drivers, they right. get more miles, more pay, and, and uh, then they stick around. So so there's uh, um, a lot of benefit to that. We also, as a company, 
are throwing out our own data all the time too. So on time performance and customer satisfaction and all yeah. that kind of stuff that gets boiled down into data sets. Yeah. It's, it must be, I don't know how you, you quite do it because you, you crunch these numbers and you analyze these data sets, but do those numbers always tell an accurate story? Number one. And number two, can our customers accurately read what kind of a, a customer service oriented company we are just from looking at a spreadsheet? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think uh, your, your point on, you know, what, what story is the, the data telling and everything is a, is a good one because there, there are times where we really have to dig in and, and understand, okay, why is it telling something? And maybe there's another factor that we haven't taken into account that, that kind of changes the story. So we're, we're always trying to be aware of like, okay, does this make sense with what we think it should be? And if it doesn't, um, why doesn't it? And, and, you know, there's a, a lot of times where, you know, human intuition and experience doesn't explain everything. And there's truly differences in the data. Um, and then we have to adjust our perception and, and understand why. But then there's other times where, you know, our intuition is right. And we have to figure out, okay, why is the data saying something different? Um, so really, uh, thinking critically is, is a big, big piece of that. And then, uh, you know, from, you know, a customer perspective, you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of discussions that go on, you know, about why certain metrics. So if we're, if we're not meeting a customer's expectations, okay, why is that? Is there something that they can do to help, you know, or do, do we need to buckle down and, and explain to them how we can be better and how we're going to be better type of thing. So, yeah, you've been here 13 years. Uh, I, I, I get the whole, I don't want to be a CPA thing better than anybody in the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, did you ever think it would be, data interests you, but did you think it would be in trucking? And does it matter for what you do? Yeah, so one of the really nice things about data is that it's transferable across all industries. Sure. Yeah, so um, that, that was definitely something that was really appealing to me. Um, you know, when I kind of went on that journey to go to NC State and everything, I, I thought, oh, you know, this is great because it will be transferable. But there was this like piece of me that I had that three years of trucking experience and I liked it and I felt there was a lot of opportunity there. So it was like, oh, I could, you know, really, really go back and maybe have an impact. And so that that really appealed to me. And, uh, you know, one of the things when I came to Creek Carrier, you know, it was like trucking, you know, you haul a load from A to B, how hard can it be? Right. And then you get in it and it's it's probably like any industry, it's a lot more complex than than you really think it is. So a lot of a lot of problems to be solved and and that's uh that's intriguing to me. So a lot of layers and yeah. yeah it's 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 a very interesting uh, transportation logistics is very it's it's fascinating. I, yeah. I wish I was smarter about it, but I <laughs> I, I haven't gone to NC State, unfortunately. Uh, what do you think the future of trucking is uh, re relating to your job? I mean, how much how much more can we gather? How much more can we push the envelope from where we are right now? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of really interesting things going on in the industry right now from, uh, you know, alternative fuels and uh, autonomous trucks that I think in the long run are really going to change things. But I, I think that a lot of that's pretty far off still yeah. just based on what I'm seeing from, you know, cost perspective and, you know, where we're at from an infrastructure perspective. I think at some point, you know, things are going to look a lot different, but it's going to be slow and, and take a lot of time. Um, you know, from, from our perspective right now, I think that uh, we're still kind of scratching the surface on what we can do from, from a data perspective and, and really understanding how certain variables interact. But uh uh, we're we're really focused on on fundamentals and how we can bring on the best freight for our drivers and and uh, service our customers. So that's really, really what we try to do. So it must be uh, difficult for you and 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 what you do. Every time the tech changes, then you got a new a new set of problems and yeah. and a new set of solutions you got to come up with, right? Yeah, yeah. We're it's uh, it's always amazing when uh, when something changes. You know we're. We're uh, we're looking into uh, changing our our fuel optimizer a little bit, and so we've we've kind of been in a, a really good groove on analyzing fuel compliance and everything. But then that changes, and so you got to go and review all of your tables, make sure everything flows through, and and uh, so there's always a, a lot of changes going on when when technology changes. What so. do you think is moving faster? Is it the software curve, which is like what is it now? It, it used to be every year and a half, and now it's 
I don't remember if it's nine months or 10 months, but is it the software curve or is it the hardware curve? Which is, which is moving faster? You know, I would say it's probably still the software curve. I mean, I think, I think there are a lot of changes in hardware that, uh, that are, are going to have a, a pretty big impact, but, uh, um, from a software perspective and creating efficiencies, I think that's where um, a lot of the improvements will happen. I mean, it's, it kind of goes hand in hand. I mean, you see a lot of the stuff going on with, uh, uh, you know, generative AI and, and uh, uh, being able to uh, you know, process data a lot faster and how that can lead to, uh, to efficiencies. Um, you know, we're seeing it with like the large language models and everything like that. But uh, uh, that that's an area that it will be really interesting to see if there are opportunities for us to implement. But uh, but in order to have that, you've got to have a lot of really fast processing. And, and that's right. where, you know, with cloud computing, you can leverage a lot of that really, really fast uh, computing power on the back end. But so. at, at the same time, you still have to fuel up in Des Moines and get, yeah. yep. get yep. to Calabasas yeah. or whatever, yeah, right? That's, so. uh, yeah, I, I mean... Uh, if you if you just think about our cost structure as a company, uh, so much of it is based on you know equipment and drivers, and you know software isn't going to like just make those costs go right. away. So we still have to like we we still have to execute on a service standpoint, and we still have to you know price according to those costs. You know there there are efficiencies that we can gain from like. Uh, you know, making people more efficient, um, but that's still a relatively small percent of our cost structure overall. So, what do you like most about working here? Um, you know, probably the challenging projects, and then uh, the people. You know, it's uh, I, I honestly I think we have such a great like laid back culture that uh, that really makes it it fun to come to work, and you can kind of. Uh, you know, interact with people in a fun way, but uh, you still kind of challenge each other and, and push. And I just feel like everybody is really working to the same goals and uh, really wants to accomplish the same thing. So when you you have projects that you're you're trying to really, uh, you know, improve efficiencies, improve improve profitability, everybody can kind of get on the same page. So. Awesome. Glad you're on our side, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for sitting down. Great hey, to meet you. Thank you for having me. And thanks for watching and thanks for listening yeah. to uh, the Meat Creek Podcast. Just a reminder, you can find our weekly updates, driver stories, and more episodes of this podcast right here on the Creek Carrier YouTube channel. We'll be back to find out more about the people we work with inside Creek Carrier and Schaefer Trucking in the next episode of Meat Creek.